So today we're gonna to do a follow-up video on our homemade soft body armor. So we previously made a video um, where we shot and tested some homemade soft body armor. Now, there was a couple things we wanted to do in that video. One, we wanted to be able to get the materials from your local hardware store, and we wanted to be made with tools that are readily accessible to anyone. Now, if you wanna see more about the materials, the layers, how we made it, and everything like that, go check out the previous video we did. Um, today, we just wanna do a follow-up on that. So what we did in, in short recap is we took a fiberglass welding blanket that we got at the hardware store. We sewed 25 layers of it together and put it in a sleeve. Then we put it up against the clay box to test it to the level 3A standards. Um, we wanted to see if one, it would stop the penetration, but also test the back face deformation. Uh, but it did not perform at all. So the nine millimeter blew right through 25 layers of this. And then later we folded it in half shot it again and it actually blew through two layers of this uh, so really it just did not perform very well now we tried to fold it in four which is kind of difficult um, with the size and shoot it and it seemed to stop it there's a couple slugs in there when we shot it a few times so somewhere between 50 and 100 layers of this stuff uh, is going to stop a, a nine millimeter so today we're going to test that a little bit better uh, so we've made ourselves a few new panels so we've made not just one panel here but we've got a couple all the way up to three of these bad boys. So we're gonna put all three of these panels up against that clay box, shoot it and see what it does. Now these ones actually have 28 layers each. So you can get 28 layers out of a, on a one welding blanket, four by six welding blanket. So we just got as many layers as we could. So there's 84 layers of that fiberglass welding blanket. We will see if that stops it. So. It's hotter than balls today. We're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna slap that up there, shoot it, and get this done with. So we're gonna shoot it with a nine millimeter. This is just a Glock 19, just your 115 grain round. So we'll test it and see if it stops that, those three layers. All right, looks like I at least hit it. So let's go see if it stopped it. Look at that aim. I think that's exactly where I aimed. All right, let's see if it stopped that. You can see the impact spot. So we went through one layer. We went through two layers. We stopped it. Look at that. Not only did we stop it, it looks like that back face deformation is within the standards. Um, I'll grab my little gauge and we'll test that, but just looking at that, it's not, it's not gonna be too deep to, um, to fail the standards, the requirements. It's 44 millimeters, so let me grab that little gauge and we'll actually test the depth on that. All right, so we're just gonna get the gauge and test that back face deformation with that nine millimeter. So that looks like we're about 24, just over 24 millimeters. So that's well within the standards. The standards allow up to 44 millimeters of back face deformation. So three layers of that, three, three panels, 84 layers of your welding blanket will stop a nine millimeter and meet the standards on that back face deformation. Now this isn't obviously perfect. There's temperature settings and different things. This, this clay has to be a certain temperature which uh, we're probably not that out here today necessarily yet. But either way, at that, at that small back fist deformation, I would expect it to pass the standards if you were shooting six times too. So we're gonna jump up to a 44 Magnum and see how it does against that now. All right, so they stopped the nine millimeter, only had 24 millimeters of back fist deformation, which is pretty good. So we're gonna jump it up to the 44 Magnum. This is quite a jump up from a nine millimeter. So let's see how it does against this one. Oh, it's kind of an edge shot. Let me, uh, let me shoot one more. That one's kind of an edge shot. Just to be safe, before we walk up there, let's, uh, let's put one more on it. All right, shot two. Last one's kind of an edge shot, so before we walk up there, we'll just put another one on it. That's better. All right. 
Let's go see what we got. All right, so we have two shots here. The first one was right here. It's kind of on the edge. I can actually see that it looks like it went through. Um, they say, I don't know if it passed through all the layers on that one. So this is the second shot, a lot better shot, center mass. So let's see how it does. Oh. So went through two layers. Third layer. Hey, it actually stopped that. So that, that edge shot, it looks like it blew out the side. Um, so it didn't actually go through this last layer. Um, so that's why that one penetration, but it did stop that, that other shot. Let's check the back face on that thing. All right, your back face deformation is 39 millimeters on that. So that is actually within the standards. Now, as I said, so these clay boxes have to be heated to a certain temperature. It is freaking hot out here today, but we've only had the box out here for just a few minutes. So this probably isn't up to temperature. So you probably see a little more in an actual lab test. Also, you have to stop six shots. Um, this might stop six shots. I guess we could shoot a few more times. Let's put some more lead in it. Let's see if it keeps stopping bullets. Um, but out here right now, both of these shots, the 44 mag as well as the nine millimeter are within the standards. So. Let's put a few more shots on it and let's just see what happens. Man, that side one, let's just look at all that. Just blue stuff down in there. Look at all that fiber. <laughs> just a mess. All right, so we're gonna put two more shots from the 44 Magnum on it. I'll try and space them out onto the right side as well as we're on the left side. And let's see if it keeps doing what it's supposed to. Shoot left side again I missed <laughs> I just flinched on that last shot so bad you have to cut that hey video man hey video man cut that second shot <laughs> I wasn't ready for it <laughs> all right so uh, I shot a couple we should put two more 44 mags down there I missed one we don't want to talk about it and uh, I didn't bring any 44 mag ammo. So one of the shots looks like it's kind of on the left side close to the other shot. I'll put a couple, two more nine millimeter shots on the right side of it if I can. And then we'll go see what it looks like. Let's put one more at the very top. All right. All right, let's go see what it looks like now. So this is the first 44 mag shot that went off to the side. This was our second 44 mag that it stopped. This is the new one that I just shot. Um, as I said, the other one I actually shot into the hillside. Yay me. And then these are the two nine millimeters we just put on there. That was the first nine millimeter. So let's see that. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six clean hits. Um, typically you want to space them a little better than that, but let's just see what it did. Oh, look at that. So you can see those nine millimeters there. They were, uh, they were stopped fairly consistently with that first shot. This 44 mag shot, you can see the first shot was right here. This is the second one right by it. And let's, uh, let's check the back face on that. Let's see if it stopped that. Well, we're maxed out there at uh, 50 millimeters and we still didn't touch the back of that. So you're probably looking at 55 to 60 millimeters on that second, that second 44 max shot. Now those shots are really close together. Um, but that being said, this plate, this most likely is not going to meet the standards with the back face, back face deformation. Now it does look like it'll stop um, those rounds, but it seems unlikely to, uh, to stop that back face deformation like it needs to. And that's kind of something we talked about in the first video. I think a big reason for that is this material is extremely flimsy. Uh, you can see these plates are just, or these, uh, these plates are just extremely floppy. Um, they need a little more stiffness, a little, something a little more rigid to help spread that, that back face deformation, that impact energy throughout the whole plate. So it actually almost did better than I thought on the back face deformation, but at the same time, 
there's 84 layers of this stuff. So anyway, that's the results. Um, now let's, uh, I'll run through, kind of let's talk a little bit about this plate versus, you know, just a regular soft body armor plate you can get and kind of see the difference between the two. All right, so kind of in summary for this soft homemade soft body armor. Um, we said we started off with 25 layers, it didn't do anything. Tested a couple layers, didn't seem to work, so we tried three full panels. This is 84 layers of this stuff, and it did stop the 9mm and 44 Mac. First shot, it even met the back face deformation requirements in IJ, but the continuation shots, it, it just looks like we'd have a hard time doing that. So basically, this just really isn't a viable option for, for your soft body armor. If you're looking to make some homemade soft body armor, this is not the route to go. You need something else in there. I mean, as you can see, three layers of this, three panels of this stuff, 84 layers, you're talking each one of these panels weighs almost three pounds. So you've got almost nine pounds right there in armor. Not only that, look how thick that is. I mean, you're three quarters inch thick on each one of these. So you've got, you know, what is that? Two and a quarter inches thick on this. Um, just extremely thick. Even your, your polyethylene armor, your rifle rated armor, it's a little thicker. Usually it's just over an inch thick, 1.2 inches. So this is just extremely thick. Um, and it's still, even with all that thickness, all that material, doesn't necessarily meet the standards. Now, maybe if you were to sew these panels, um, we didn't add a lot of stitching throughout. You could add some stitching throughout, stiffen them up a bit, and you might be able to meet that back face deformation requirement. Um, there's a possibility of that. But once again, if you do that, you're gonna add a lot of weight to this. Um, with all that thread, you're gonna add some more weight to it. It's already on basically nine pounds. So just in reality, it's not a great option. The other piece in this is the price. If you're like, hey, I wanna make some homemade body armor, save some money, uh, this, each one of these welding blankets costs about 25 bucks. So you're $75 in just your, your welding blanket material here. So um, once you get your, your fabric and different things too, you know, you're gonna be, well, you're gonna be 80 plus dollars getting your, uh, your panels built. Now in comparison, our level 3A soft armor panel, so we sell this for $99. So your pricing is not that different. You can see the difference in thickness there. One is, you know, two and a half inches thick and one is, this one's only 0.3 inches thick. Um, the other thing's weight, so this weighs 15 ounces, doesn't even weigh a pound, and it'll actually meet the back face deformation requirements. So that one, uh, it's just difference in materials. You know, this uses a UHMWPE and Kevlar hybrid materials, and it's just super high performing materials. So anyway, the end results of our soft body armor is, this is not a good option. <laughs> Um, it was kind of fun to test and see what it would actually do, but this, uh, this fiberglass material, this welding blank material is not gonna work for your soft body armor. So you have to go back to the drawing board, see if we can find some new materials. Just kind of one thing to know on this material is one of the reasons we use this. So this fiberglass material, when mixed with epoxy, does actually perform really great for ballistics. Um, fiberglass in general is pretty strong material. They use it a lot for ballistic paneling and things like that because of the weight and the affordability of it. But that being said, it does not seem to work as a standalone soft armor option. So if you're looking for soft armor, don't do that. You're better off just buying an actual panel. The other thing I should mention with this is the consistency of the performance is gonna vary. With any homemade body armor, this is a big thing with homemade body armor, the materials you're getting are not built for, usually are not going to be built for body armor. Um, meaning they might have some properties, like you can buy Kevlar, in different forms, but it's not necessarily ballistic rated Kevlar. It's not designed to stop a bullet. Now, why that matters is really just your consistency in materials. So even though this performed this way, if you get 84 layers of this again, it might not perform exactly the same because they just don't have the rigorous requirements. So the materials we buy from these, uh, these ballistic material companies, all that material is tested. So every batch of material they produce that they send us, it's all tested. Um, to make sure it meets all the different requirements that it's going to do what it's supposed to do. Obviously, when you're making body armor, the materials that go into body armor, they need to do what they need. They are supposed to do every single time. You can't have a failure point or you're going to have some serious problems. So all that material goes through rigorous testing. We get testing results for all the material sent to us to make sure it meets the requirements it's supposed to meet. Um, so that's also one thing to caveat there where some material like this is not, it does not need to be tested that rigorously. So you're going to get a lot more variation in the performance of your materials. Um, this is true with, with Kevlar's, with things like that, even with steel, you get that as well. So 
Anyway, that's another thing to note. Just because it works one time does not mean it's always going to work every time. Um, you're gonna get a lot more variance on your, your performance with these other materials. But anyway, that's the end result. So we will um, we'll think, go back to the drawing board, see if we can uh, find some other materials at the hardware store that we can try and make some soft body armor out of to meet the level 3A requirements. Till next time.